Hi, my name is Kit Farn. I'm a poet, novelist, and critic. Thank you, Carcanet, for publishing my third collection called Ink Out Reader, and publicising it and getting it to the hands of readers. Um, I'm not very good at、um, being in front of the camera, so I will try my best.、Um, Um, Calculate sent me five questions, and I will try to answer them.、Um, first, tell us a little bit about you and my writing.、Um, I was born in Hong Kong and came to the UK to study、um, at the age of twenty-one, and somehow accidentally stayed on.、Um, I've written three books of poems and and a novel. Um, writing live for me feels like a hobby on the side because I I have a full time job that actually pays the bill.、Um, I feel more like a reader than a writer most of the time because I probably spend more time reading than writing.、Um, but I do think that this third book, the Ink Cloud Reader,、uh, means a lot to me.、Um, Partly because it is a book that I feel like、um, I've, I've been through a watershed in my life.、Um, I felt like I was struck by lightning in the last year or so.、Um, so this book somehow gave me a sense of、um, how do I describe it?、Um, a sense of. Arriving and departing, yes, that's that's what it is. The second question is where my where's my favorite place to work? Um, when、I'm, when the word when I see the word work, I immediately thinking about、uh, my office because I have a full time job in a medical school. But um, but I think what I should really not think about that. Here, work here means writing, but I actually don't think writing is work for me. So,、um, so anyway, to answer the question, what's my favorite place?、Um, I think my favorite place to write is um, um, in the sitting room in the house with a window just behind me, and occasion I can look at the streets and the traffic.、Um, but a more pertinent question for me is when is my favorite time to write? I think it would be.、Um, I think writing for me is like、uh, squeezing in, like packing. Really, you're kind of squeezing into tiny little time that、I'm, I have in the day.、Um, so I would try to write every day if I can, even as like five minutes or one minute, opening the file, rereading what I've written,、um, tweaking a word or punctuation.、Um, Uh, but my favorite time to write, strangely, is actually just before dinner,、um, like between five and half past six. That would be like for me the ideal time because I feel like、um, I'm starving, but at the same time, food is going to come. So for some reasons, my mind just goes into this very strange zone、um, of creativity. So、um, the third question is what. Was the best book I've read recently that blew me away? I've read two books recently that blew me away.、Uh, the first one is Najwa Darish,、uh, Exhausted on the Cross. It's translated brilliantly by、uh, Kareem James Abu Zayed.、Um, is I think this book packs a punch, and 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 is that it contains some extremely heartbreaking poems about separation. Home, homesickness, and using religion or the religious language in such a lacerating way to talk about one's life. Um, um, Darish is a Palestinian poet, um, and this book contains just some of the most kind of condensed form of uh, of of. Of emotion that that I haven't experienced it for a long time. And the second book is、uh, Ada Limon's Hurting Kind.、Um, 
for me, this is the show stopper. Uh, I haven't read a book as lingering and and it's almost unforgettable for for a very long time. Uh, it's in a way not a very ambitious book, even though it looks quite big. Um, I think it has over ninety pages. Um, it's framed around the four seasons, uh, but the book, the poems just is so much about the living world and about us and us as human beings in the living world but but it's not really like the kind of eco poetry that's kind of putting the blame and responsibility on one party it really is about how how do we situate ourselves in such a troubling living world and and the poems are absolutely stunning and there is lyric intensity there that I haven't that really reminds me of uh, Elizabeth Bishop and strangely Emily Dickinson um, so please go and buy this book and read it um, um, yes I, 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 I keep re returning to it so um, let me just carry on how did I feel putting this new selection together um, strangely I feel quite confident but at the same time, shit scared. Um, partly because the poems in the book, uh, they they do seem to have a threat, and but at the same time, I mean, they come together, but at the same time, they they also repel each other in such a powerful way. It's like uh, as if you are in a room, and as if the poems all come to a party and. And everybody's singing, dancing, but at the same time, you know, underneath the music, uh, there are undercurrents. So, it was a challenge putting the book together. Um, but having, um, because this book, in a way, is a big water threat. Uh, a lot of things happened to me um, and my life in the last two years, and I felt like I have been struck by lightning. Um, sometimes more than once um, so um, what strangely helped me put the book together was uh, visiting Venice uh, in April 2022 after years of not traveling over two years of not traveling during the pandemic um, finally have the confidence um, and ventured out and went to Venice and went back to the church, uh, Santa Maria della Miracoli, um, a church adored by, by many poets, particularly Ezra Pound. Uh, it, is pop it, is a, it is a sensational church and um, is kind of purest Renaissance construction. Um, so I was there overwhelmed by revisiting it again after all these years, overwhelmed by the kind of thrill of traveling and I was confronted by these beautiful marble sheets that have patterns that looks like ink also looks like cloud um, I was just drawn to reading these patterns and I started taking lots of photographs and when I came home I was going through the photos and I realized oh my god these these patterns these marble sheets are speaking to the poems and 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 so I use them in the book and if you read the book you will see that um, there are these abstract marbly inky cloudy patterns that are used as section dividers and and I think somehow um, these images help me contain the poems in a way that I don't, I, I've never expected before so sorry I babbled on and I should um, okay, this is the last question. Do you have a favorite piece in the collection? Um, this is very difficult because it's like asking a parent who is your favorite child. Um, I do think parents have their favorite child. So, um, but I have more than one child here uh, in this book. Um, particularly, two poems really mean uh, a lot to me. Partly because they still shock me when I read them now. The first one is is called Delphi. Uh, which is which refers to uh, the oracle, the Delphi oracle in Greece. Uh, the poem tried to reconstruct the five columns and remaining columns in Delphi, and uh, they are visually striking. And somehow the visual language helped me 
to talk about something that is quite difficult. Um, um, so that's the first one. The second one is called the art of reading. Um, and it actually is a response to this amazing book called On Reading by the photographer Andrew Kotash. Um, if there is a disaster tomorrow and I need to leave the house with a few belongings and this is one of the books that I definitely will grab. It's actually by my bed. So um, um, the poem is, in a way, each line in my poem is responding to a photograph in the Kurt Hash book. Um, um, yes, that's, that, that's it. Um, uh, thank you for listening to me babbling on. Um, thank you, Kalkanet, and everyone in Kalkanet for believing in this book, pushing the books out there. Um, and thank you for all of you readers and potential readers. I hope um, the in cloud reader speaks to you. And that's it. Thank you. Bye.